that bloody sunshine back, isn't it? Here's a little ring, not from somebody, from a, I said, dare I say, admirer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, is someone on the phone? Who is it? Shall we see who it is? Hello? Oh, yes, Your Majesty. Oh, certainly. When do you want her round? Uh, it's the Queen for you, Nefeli. You know, I had like an office job in Bristol and after uni and just thought like, life is so precious. What is it that really makes my heart sing? And, you know, being outdoors was the answer. I like cider. Years ago, I used to drink, well, you wouldn't want to know what I used to drink. <laughs> when I left school in 1962, my grandfather said to me, said, you live like a millionaire, my son, don't die one, because he said to some other buggers worry when you die owing a million, he said. <laughs> Years ago, our local pub at Westy there, the Burton Hand, I used to take 50 gallons a day, which is 400 pints a day. That's 47 years ago. And now I don't go in there with none at all now. That's all the people drunk with cider, bread and cheese and onion. Never killed them then. That lived, they lived all right on that. <laughs> I'm just sort of shy artist, really, I think. Some of the big stuff that I do is, is, only works in Glastonbury. This one here is called Clamposaurus. Uh, and it's built on an old dumper. And you have to start it with a big handle like that. So this one's the, the Mad Bull. I use it for destroying vans and cars, you know, you, just, you can just impale them, flick them over its head. I like to just crash into people's lives when they're not expecting it. One of the main aspects of Tinker's Bubble is that we don't use fossil fuels on the land. As a woman, I haven't really had any experience or kind of um, encouragement to do things to do with woods or building before. And now I feel really happy, you know, splitting logs, sawing, processing, all these really simple things that actually are really empowering. People don't have that space to think, OK, what really compels me? What, what is my gift in life that is so unique that, that for a lot of people is, has some aspect of feeling happier in nature? Come up, it's nice. It's a good place up here. <laughs> if you see a rabbit on the side of the road, dinner! It saves you going to work, getting the money, going to the shop, getting some food and coming home, I go dinner, back home again. This was um, up on the, on the top road there, and um, I just had a quick look in the mirror, slam my brakes on, and put it, put it straight in the car. It's not really perfectly hygienic, but if you pull the piece off like that, this is just lovely meat. You look at that. Fat in there, look, not maggots. People always say, What have you got in the pot? I say, Do you want some? Yeah, that's lovely. They go, they don't even realize that what they're eating, really. Like I said the other day, we said, Oh, we've even got some woodpecker in there. So we got sacked, weren't allowed to go back. I prefer to be out here and I would in a, a town, and put it that way. You know, I, 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 working in a factory, I don't think that would suit me. I don't, I don't oh, think I could... Um, no way. A lot of coffins go out. You know, um, that's a regular thing, you know. Coffins is 
quite a lot a week go out of coffins, you know, to uh, what they, they call eco coffins. Um, a lot of those we do a lot for um, Fort and Mason, um, which is hampers Christmas time. certain times of the year we'd be between 15 and 20 percent of the British market. It's the single largest block of glass in the country that's producing soft fruit. The day I came back from holidays I had to come and see the two nurseries that evening. We couldn't wait till the following morning. Quick spin around to make sure they were okay. And I, I would have said before that I'd taken the nurseries kind of going ah that's a load of rubbish why well, you're so attached to something but all of a sudden you see when you are growing something you do get very attached to it. All our labour is Eastern European, mainly of Romanian and Bulgarians. I've come here three, four months, oh, I'm more here. I'm go Romanian, back again after two, three weeks. Work again, okay? Yeah, this is the life from Romanian people. All the people, all the Romanian people is like me. The saddest thing I've ever seen was in the airport in Riga. Because we see people at the airport and their loved ones leaving to work in the UK, leaving to go to Ireland, and they're crying and they're leaving kids in Everton crying. That was the hardest thing I'd ever seen. So, like I said, you have to understand within people what they leave behind. Do you know, they leave families. It's not easy, like. The money is half for Romanian, half for me. Uh, yesterday, 200 for my son. I'm here for my family. My name's John Leach. I'm a third generation potter. Well, I, I'm nearly local. I'm, I'm not, not, not truly local, but I've been here 52 years. The human spirit and the human skills are very much involved when you are doing things and creating things by hand. As creative people, we mind about that. Nine acres came up, planted 500 trees. And then two years later, planted three and a half thousand in the 6.3 acre field next door. You know, my father's a potter. I used to bring him up here when he was alive and put him in a hammock. And I'd be in another hammock and we talk and talk and put the world to rights. <laughs> Back in the 80s, I sang and played guitar in a anarcho-punk band called The Mob. In many people's eyes, that's who I am and what I'm defined by. I sort of manage the place and I manage it to some degree, like look after people a little bit. We house artists and artisans, makers, musicians, woodmen, metal workers, all sorts of different people. We notice it over and over and over again. What people love about coming here is the sense of community and the, f the feeling that somebody cares about you, you know, or is interested in your well being. You're interested in there, or you can just reach out and touch them. I'm using steam coal. The resins and the saps from ancient trees and forests compressed, and it, 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 it turns into a bituminous mass, um, a nitrogenous sludge, I suppose it was at one stage, and then it becomes rock. It is a nice little bit of ironwork and, and a lovely bit of artwork that really sort of sits well in here and makes me a happy person. Um, I've, I've tried to fit into many places. Uh, always been a bit of a misfit. Um, I like music, I like my craft, um, and sort of don't quite fit in anywhere. I was interested in a, a small bit of workspace and 
I've been here ever since, really. You know, I've lived lived elsewhere and and worked with Mark here and have my own little workspace. Um, so I found somewhere that uh, I belonged. It, it, it's the thing that's t terribly, terribly missing in the modern world: is the connection between individuals. I sort of drifted into circus. First of all, doing shows on the street. And when, when I realised I could do it, and people used to stay and watch the shows, it made people happy. And they really enjoyed, and that sense, that look of wonder in their eyes when they see you stand up on a really thin rope, and you know, they just don't believe it's possible, and they see it as like magic. People in Somerset are really accepting of what we do and who we are. Maybe more of a, a tradition of travelling people, and especially because of Glastonbury Festival. The performance in itself actually does feel like it's quite part of our relationship. Like, I always say I kind of fall in love with him a bit more when we get on the wire together and we meet each other's eyes and, you know, you have that trust in each other. Uh, I think we're, we're sort of almost forced to grow up too quickly before we actually know what life's about and, and which direction we may want to go in. Um, it seems like life's, as soon as you're 40 years old, you've, you've got to have all your pensions in place, you've all your investments, your mortgage paid off, your second home, making money on Airbnb, you know, and all, all those crazy things, the new car, you know. And it, it's like, I'm 53, I'm just starting my life. I've just found somewhere I love. I've been, been here 10 years. so. So I'm, I'm, I'm just starting, really, um, and I've got another, hopefully, 30 years, 40 years work left in me. I got to 35 years old, I thought, I haven't grown up yet, I don't think I'll bother now, and so I feel like I'm, you know, I'm still a boy playing, you know, because you can get so many um, responsibilities and worries and money and da 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 that why not play with the toys we've got. This is the first century in history where man has had something better than a horse. With kids, if you show them grown-up people behaving in this totally irresponsible manner, nobody can tell them after that that grown-up have to be dull, you know, and do dull things because they can think, no, what about those grown-up who had that car that jumped up and down on hydraulics? So, what about that grown-up who built a car into a horse? I do say this is the best thing I've ever made out of clay. It'll never be sold, but not, not in a gallery anyway. <laughs> it's about assisting and going with nature, really. Most of, most of our time we're trying to control nature, you know, growing crops and all sorts of things uh, and keeping weeds at bay. And sometimes it's good to let the weeds grow and then you, you get a, a, a crop of something else. Every, every door you open in Somerset, there's something strange going on behind it. And you, you, I find it every day, every day you go out, you wander down a lane, you turn to the right, and, whoa, I never knew that was there. And yeah, I suppose people don't realise that, do they? Up again. 